Coming in at number 64, we have New Orleans Saints left tackle Teron Armstead. And, you know, Teron's an interesting guy to kind of evaluate and rank because when you just look at play, he is most definitely one of the best left tackles in the league, right? But to me, the problem with him is just his durability. As, you know, you, you hear it so often, it's kind of a cliche nowadays that as an athlete, your best ability is your durability, right? Because ultimately, if you aren't on the field, you can't contribute to uh, help your team win. Well, well Teron Armstead, over these past four seasons, he's only played 42 of a possible 64 games. And, you know, sure, when he does play, his uh, his kind of level of play is is fantastic, right? He's one of the top tackles in the league. But the problem is, for those other 22 games that you've missed over these past four years, there's a huge drop-off from you to your backup, right? And, and, and that's kind of the problem with Teron Armstead. You know, it's kind of ironic because in the last video I did uh, Trent Williams, and I was talking about how you had to penalize him because he didn't play in 2019. Well, well, with Armstead, it's not even that he's ever missed an entire season. It's just massive chunks of these seasons that he's missing. So, for example, in these past four seasons, he's played seven games, 10 games, 10 games, and 15 games. Well, well I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that as, as somebody trying to rank these players in, in kind of a universal context. And you can, you can listen to me go over my criteria in the link above my head, but I just don't see how he can go any higher when he's only available, let's say, two-thirds of the time. You know, and, and obviously this, this past season, uh, 15 of the 16 regular season games, like that's fine, but it's the 10s and the 10s and the 7s that, that, just, that just bothers me. And that's why I can't say that he is a top two, three left tackle when, when even though the ability might be there, the durability most certainly isn't. And first things first, in terms of, you know, just what makes Teron Armstead so good when he is healthy and on the field, you've got to start with his athleticism, right? As, you know, you want to talk about a, a fast offensive lineman. I just got done doing the Trent Williams video. You know, that guy's freakishly athletic. Well, well Teron Armstead is like freakishly squared or, you know, to the second power, the 10th power, whatever you want to call it, right? This man at the NFL Combine back when he was coming out uh, for the NFL draft, he ran a 471 40 yard dash, which is, you know, for those who are unfamiliar, that's the fastest time by anybody uh, over 305 pounds recorded still to this day. And, and, and that's absolutely nuts. And even even with his assortment of, of various injuries, whether it's ankles, knees, whatever it's been, you know, he still he still is one of the best athletes in the league at that tackle position. That's exactly what you're going to see here, where you just get a chance to see him pulling around the edge, wrapping in space. And, you know, he's just so comfortable out there because, you know, so many times you see an offensive lineman get out there and they're kind of scared because, you know, of course, a cornerback, they're so much faster than you, a defensive uh, defensive back, safety, even the linebacker, you know, they're sometimes able to to just simply kind of sidestep you, uh, juke you out in a sense, and, and you're going to look silly. Well, Teron Armstead, he's, I don't want to say just as fast as these guys, but, you know, if there's any offensive lineman that's comparable, I guess it would be Teron Armstead, right? As, as there you see it again, just does a great job uh, working up the alley, finding Bradley Roby and, and paving the way for, for Kamara to get a huge game. We'll, we'll play it one more time just for good measure because this is just uh, wildly impressive. There you see him get eyes on Roby and then motor him out of the play. Huge game for Alvin off the back of it. Just great stuff. And here's another good example. This time, instead of the reach box, me on a down block where he and uh, the left guard here, they're going to be working from the three technique uh, to Devin White, right? And just what I want you to see is how initially off the snap, he's able to so quickly recognize that, hey, this three tech, he's going away. What does that mean? You know, get a hand on, kind of make sure the guard is able to uh, capture him and then ultimately work up to uh, Devin White and try and beat him to the point of attack. Well, you know, if you've watched any of my linebacker videos, you know that, you know, more often than not with these elite freakishly athletic linebackers, which, you know, Devin White, even though he's young, he certainly fits that mold. They'll, uh, they'll be able to split between you and the guard, or they'll be able to just beat you over the top and, and make a play on, on, this, uh, on this power run. We'll look at how Arm said he's just so quick in, in his ability to capture White and uh, really just motor him off the screen as Kamara, he's able to ultimately pick up a first down and, and keep the chains moving for the Saints. Just great stuff. Again, really off the back of Armstead's athleticism and in this case, specifically his short area quickness. And next up, you know, when you have somebody who is so quick in short areas, who is so athletically gifted, they're typically going to be pretty good at climbing to the second level. And, and Armstead, he's no exception. I actually thought that this was one of the biggest areas where he surprised me as, you know, so often I hear that Ryan Ramschick, that he's, you know, one of the league's best run blockers, the right tackle of the Saints. So I actually thought uh, there were a couple of games where, where Armstead, uh, he was certainly better in my opinion. And a lot of it was due to his ability to work these double teams, work these combo blocks in which he's able to not only 
uh, kind of help displace the defensive lineman at the line of scrimmage, but also work up and cut off one of those second level defenders in which, you know, this case, what you're going to have here is look at how he kind of motors through tempos through with that left arm. He, he keeps that out just enough. So Josh Hill, he can, uh, he can kind of gain leverage on this uh, slanting outside linebacker, defensive end, uh, whatever you want to call him. And then look at how Teron, Teron Arms said he does keep those eyes, though, on Darius Leonard. He knows that that is ultimately who he has to work to for this play to work. We'll look at how he's able to, hey, uh, give just enough for Hill to, as I said, uh, gain leverage. And then, boom, now he's squared up on Darius Leonard, who, as we know, he's one of the best linebackers in the league. But then, hey, gets his hands on right in his chest, motors him uh, just enough so Latavius Murray can kind of get – uh, a nice first down off the back of it. And, and it's just plays like these that he makes on a consistent basis that, you know, there's not that many tackles who do it better than Armstead. We'll, we'll just say that. And, you know, I think that he's pretty underrated in this regard just because of his ability as a run blocker to to maintain the integrity of the line of scrimmage and, as well as climb to that second level. And here's another really good example in which you're going to have Armstead. He's going to try and reach Vic Beasley on kind of this outside zone track in which Andres Pete, he's going to be following right behind him, right? So he's going to reach Vic Beasley just enough, uh, kind of pass him off to Pete and then, and then work up and try and pick off one of these linebackers over the top. And ultimately what you're going to see is even though Vic Beasley is one of the quickest and most explosive defensive ends in the entire NFL, look at how Armstead, he's able to just beat him off the snap. Obviously Vic did kind of slant in a little bit, but then more importantly, look at how he's already got his head up. He's looking, who is he going to go to? And ultimately what he sees is, hey, Devondre Campbell, he's scraping directly over the top uh, pretty quickly here. What do I got to do? I got to work up. And, uh, and pick him off so that way Kamara, he can, he can try and get that edge and ultimately, uh, you know, make it, a, make it a third and manageable here on, on this play. It's just good stuff because, again, there's, uh, there's very few offensive linemen as consistent when it comes to working up to that second level as Armstead. And, uh, and I really do think it's just one of, the, one of the best traits that he has. And next up, as we kind of transition to Armstead as a pass blocker now, what I wanted to talk about was his length. And, you know, again, as I mentioned in the Williams video, I'm not necessarily saying that, oh, because he has long arms, he's successful. No, he only has 34 inch arms, which, you know, that is, again, it's above average, but it's nothing crazy, right? What I'm talking about is his ability to use his length to keep his opponents at bay out of his chest. And, and in this case, what you're going to see is look at how he does a great job of getting those hands on Nick Bosa just enough, knock him off his path just enough. To, to where Drew Brees, he's able to stay in that pocket and, and confidently deliver a, a nice pass to Jared Cook for six points. It's just, it's just plays like these that are really impressive to me as, as we'll play it again as, you know, look at how he just stays inside out. He doesn't open up until he absolutely has to. And then boom, when he does, he, he knows just when to time that punch, get hands on, and hey, there's six points on the board by the Saints. Kind of hand in hand with utilizing that length to keep defenders at bay. Armstead, he does a great job of just placing his hands on a consistent basis right in his opponent's chest to kind of halt their momentum and uh, and really give his quarterback, Drew Brees in this instance, more time. Is What you're going to see here is Solomon, uh, Solomon Thomas off the edge. He's going to just kind of go for what appears to be a straight bull rush. Well, look at how uh, Armstead, he just does a beautiful job of getting those hands up and under on contact to which uh, Salman Thomas, he's never really able to do anything. His hands are up here by the shoulder pads of Armstead. You're not going to be able to drive a 305-pound man of, of Armstead's caliber when you have your hands up around up around kind of that throat area. You know, when, when you're Armstead and you have those hands in his chest, you're able to just kind of lift up, sink your hips, and and really just sit on sit on that block. And as a result, he's able to do just that. Drew Brees stands in there, delivers a, uh, a dart across the middle, and hey, guess what? There's Ted Ginn again for six points. And I'm not going to say it's because of Tehran, but if, if Tehran, if he uh, wildly places that punch and, and Salma Thomas just blows by him, th this might be a sack. Well, well, Armstead didn't because, again, he's so consistently solid at placing those hands right where he wants them. And, and really, it leads to a lot of his wins as a pass blocker. And almost equally important as your ability to place the hands is, is kind of what you're packing behind that punch in a sense. How much force are you bringing? How, how much strength do you have in your ability to displace these defenders? out of their gaps and get them where you want them, right? And, and Armstead, as we're going to try to kind of transition from pass blocker, run blocker, and back and forth a little bit here, that's exactly what he's going to do, right? So here you're going to have him with Jarrell Casey where, you know, look at how he's able to, I know that might not have looked that pretty when you, when you initially saw it, but look at how he's able to place this inside hand and, and leverage Casey out just enough to where he's going to open up this B gap wide open to where Kamara, he, he goes untouched into the end zone the entire way. I'll try and pause it just on time for you guys. Look at how, see see how he has this, that left hand kind of right in the sternum, right in the chest of Casey. And then he has the, this right hand just outside the shoulder pad because he knows where this ball is going. It, ideally, this play is banging 
right inside of him. And look at how he's going to bring this forceful inside hand and just and just kind of violently torque him towards the outside there just enough to where Kamara, he's going to be able to read that block, work actually inside of the guard's block, and, and there goes a, a huge touchdown run uh, as a result. Just great stuff primarily as a result of Armstead's strong hands. This next boy here actually isn't isn't anything all that special. I just like it because, you know, he, he gets into uh, Wes Horton here a little bit and then just kind of drops him like a sack of potatoes. You know, he, he he does pack a punch and, you know, when he wants you to go somewhere, you're going to go there. And on this play, he wanted he wanted to leverage uh, Horton inside so Kamara could get the edge. And ultimately, you know, when he was done with him, he was just going to toss him, right? And that's exactly what he did. There goes Wes Horton. There goes Alvin Kamara, six points for the Saints. And ultimately, you know, the, the number one objective of any offensive lineman on each and every play, especially running play, is to generate movement, right? Uh, vertical, horizontal, anything to displace a guy from their gap and give your running back room to roam. And, and that's exactly what you're going to see here. Well, watch how Armstead, once he gets his hands into number 94, look at how he's just able to motor him from, from inside that uh that defensive right hash all the way to outside the numbers i'm going to play that back one more time because you know you want to talk about horizontal movement and really just opening things up and creating gaps i mean i mean look at that right there that that's just beautiful in which in which hey if uh latavius read this a little better a little bit quicker he uh he he might be he might be able to pick up a first down on this obviously he's not because he uh he was a little bit slow not exactly sure what he was seeing outside but but again you just see teron armstead Look at him starting a couple yards inside the hash at, at that. And then, hey, he's going to finish this man all the way out uh, a couple steps outside the numbers. It's just it's just beautiful stuff uh, because he is so powerful and, and so able, I guess, as a run blocker. And here's another great example. This time it's uh, going to be against Everson Griffin. I don't actually know who that last one was against. F.A. Obata, according to Pro Football Reference, but I've never, I've never heard that name before in my life. So we're going to watch the real one here against some real competition former pro bowler, Everson Griffin. And, and what you're going to see is, again, just look at how Armstead, he does a great job getting those hands in the chest, getting one hand outside on that shoulder pad, and then again, just leveraging that inside hand to the point that, hey, if Latavius, if he doesn't cut this back, you know, this looks like it could be a really nice play in this uh, in this front side A yep or B yep. You, you, if you kind of just picture this play as it develops, what you're going to have is, let me, let me draw it out for you guys. You have Jared Cook blocking out on that linebacker there. You have Andres Pete. If he's able to uh, kind of get a nice reach fit on Eric Kendricks there, Eric McCoy, he's in a good spot for uh, to block the nose tackle. And then Teron Armstead, again, he's motoring Everson Griffin out. What does that mean? This ball, if uh, if Latavius wanted it to, he could probably rip it either front side B gap or he could probably rip it front side A gap. Unfortunately, he tr he decides to, to bang it backside. Not that these fits are bad. The only problem is those guys aren't able to uh, – they're not able to – sustain those fits right and ultimately a couple guys end up shedding their block how do I get rid of this pen there we go all right and, and as you're going to see there you have a couple guys shed but ultimately a uh, great block by Armstead and a great example of him just creating movement generating movement to where hey if Latavius did want to go there he most certainly could have and potentially had a bigger gain than he did and kind of naturally you know you think of the strong hands you think of the hand placement you think of just the movement that he's able to generate laterally vertically downfield and, and you're going to have one of the best guys uh in terms of just uh blocking at the point of attack in the entire nfl right and that's exactly what teron armstead is and that's exactly why sean payton here moved him from that left tackle spot over to uh, put him in kind of like a monster set a heavy set whatever you want to call it you're going to have teron armstead ryan ramstick and Larry Warford all on the same single side of the offensive line. That's a lot of that's a lot of weight right there, and that's a lot of good run blockers, right? And that's exactly that's exactly why Sean Payton's doing it because you're going to put these guys here going up against uh, Daniel Hunter, for example, in Toronto Armstead. Look at how he's able to motor him from the five yard line all the way basically into the end zone as as they're able to uh, maintain that short corner, give Kamara a a pretty pretty easy run into the end zone. Just a great job by the Saints on the front side as. Uh, you know, he did let up on that block a little bit a little bit too early, but hey, does it matter? They put six points on the board, and much of it was because the, the play call and the confidence that Sean Payton had in uh, Tron Armstead to put him over to that front play side, as well as just the ability of Tron Armstead to motor him into the end zone and, and hey, help put six points on the board in a critical playoff game. And here's another beautiful example where Armstead, he's going to be back over on his normal natural side, the left side of the offensive line, in which what you're going to see here is just a, a beautiful block uh, down block by uh, Armstead onto Brennan Scarlett, and then he's going to climb up and, and kind of break off just enough to get a good chunk of Zach Cunningham and cut him off from making the play as well. If this if this run was just uh, dependent 
on he and Andres Pete's uh, double double team here. This play would most likely be a touchdown, right? But unfortunately, uh, Josh Hill, he gets beat a little bit on the outside. But, you know, again, we'll, we'll show the, just the absolute movement that he's able to get, first of all, that both of them are able to generate. I shouldn't credit it all to uh, Armstead. But then look at how he's able to break off and uh, kind of get Cunningham caught in the wash there to the point that, hey, if this block is secured, Alvin Kamara, he's one-on-one -on -one against Aaron Colvin in space, 15 yards downfield. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not really a betting man, but if I had to, I would take, I would take Alvin Kamara in that situation eight, nine out of ten times because this man, he makes people miss in space, one-on-one -on -one against the safety. I'll take my chances on Alvin Kamara. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see that happen, but, but hey, if it was based on uh, their double team at the point of attack, it most certainly would have been a bigger game than it was. And before we finish the run blocking section of the video, I did want to touch on Tron Armstead's ability to finish opposing defenders as, you know, he's not, he's not some Quentin Nelson out there getting, getting 10 pancakes a game or, you know, some absurd amount, but, but Armstead, he does a really good job of blocking through the whistle for the most part in which, you know, he's going to find himself in some opportunities, just given his strength, given his athleticism to put guys on the dirt, right. And just kind of screw them into the ground. And that's exactly what you're going to have here where, Hey, it's going to be an inside zone uh, run by Kamara. Once Jarrell Casey, he's trying to peek into the backfield, find, find uh, where this play is going. He's going to relieve pressure. And then you're just going to see Tron Armstead kind of, again, toss him like a sack of potatoes down into the ground uh, just, just before where the pile would have been. And it's just, it's just a nice play where, hey, once you feel that relief of pressure as Casey's trying to disengage and find the ball, look at how Armstead just does a nice job motoring his feet and ultimately finishing Jarrell Casey. And here's another really solid example, right, where you're just going to see Armstead on the front side. He's just going to be tasked with base blocking uh, Bernardrick McKinney, right? Just don't allow him to cross your face as we're trying to bang this ball right into the B gap. And, and he does a beautiful job of that. He places uh, that left hand right in the chest of McKinney. Um, then he takes that right hand, puts it right over the left shoulder pad. Again, he, he makes sure he can't cross his face, get into that B gap. And ultimately, he and Andres Pete, both, both of their uh, defenders on that play side, they end up uh, with their backs on the ground for a reason because you know, not only those two, but this entire Saints offensive line, they're, they're one of the best O-lines in the league at not only making blocks, but finishing blocks as well as more often than not, you're going to see one or two defenders on the ground when, when you're watching these guys. And that's, that's what makes them so exciting. And it's really what makes Ron Armstead such a, such a good, well-balanced player, right? Just his ability to run block. I know so many people, they point to his pass blocking ability, likely because of that athleticism and, you know, just the, the crazy 40 and, and his, uh, his frame, you know, he doesn't necessarily look like he'd be a great run blocker. When you look at him, he does kind of look a, a little bit lanky or taller. Well, well, no, he's also a very good, debatably better run blocker than pass blocker, if we're being completely honest. And, and that's not to take anything away from his pass blocking because we are going to get into that here, but he's very good at both, right? And I do want to finish off on these last few slides, talk about Armstead's ability as a pass blocker, just in terms of his footwork for the most part, as you know, he does use that, that shorter quickness, that athleticism to just put himself in a great spot on the vast majority of plays, right? And it allows him to just beat these defensive linemen and linebackers to the spot to the point where they're not really able to do anything, right? And that's exactly what you're going to see here in which, you know, look at him going up against Sam Acho uh, of the Buccaneers in which we'll see it better from the opposite view, but, you know, hey, before the play, he recognized somebody potentially coming off this edge. You're going to see him communicating with Josh Hill. Hey, you know, you stay out on, on that edge defender if he's coming. And then look at how Armstead, he just does such a great job of, you know, recognizing he's slanting inside. He's trying to get to that B gap. What's he going to do? He's going to mirror and match him inside. And then, and then he's potentially going to work back outside because, you know, as, as a defender, Sam Macho, he recognizes, okay, Armstead took that away. What do I got to do? I got to try and counter back outside. And then, hey, Armstead's there again. What do I got to do? I got to counter again back to the inside. And by that time, hey, the ball's already gone. And, you know, when you're, a, when you're an offensive lineman, if you're forcing guys to counter not once, not twice, sometimes three times, you most likely won the rep. And that's exactly what Armstead does there as uh, his ability to mirror and match. I'm not going to say that it leads to a touchdown, but it definitely contributes on uh, a Michael Thomas uh, score. And last but not least, when it comes to Armstead, you know, what does make him so good as a pass blocker? It's all the stuff we've talked about to this point, you know, the length, the strong hands, the hand placement, et cetera. But to me, almost, almost more importantly is his footwork, right? As you know, he, he's kind of strange in the fact that, you know, when you watch him, he does not cover that much ground when he's pass setting. At least it doesn't appear so, right? Look at how he does such a great job of lagging inside out 
to where, you know, if you're just in Houston, you can't take this into the B gap, right? You just physically can't because there's no room there. Well, Armstead, he's so athletic and, you know, he trusts his athleticism so much to where he's essentially just vertically setting back to the point that, you know, he, he knows that, you know, once Houston gets uh, even with me hip to hip, as you're going to see right right here, see how their hips are almost aligned at that point. That's when he's going to turn and go and run him past Drew Brees. You know, things can get a little bit tight with Armstead from time to time uh, simply because of the fact that, again, like I said, he's not covering that much ground. You know, some guys, you just see them when, when they're facing a, a good pass rusher like Justin Houston, they're going to try and fly out and get to this spot as fast as they can. Well, a lot of times when that happens, hey, you, you leave a massive hole here underneath uh, to which, you know, if you're opening your hips already waiting for contact, Houston, he's just going to cut that underneath and go kill your quarterback. Well, Armstead, he lags inside. He keeps his uh, his feet square to the line of scrimmage. And then, hey, uh, once Houston gets hip to hip with him, he's just going to kind of wall him off, clear the way for Drew Brees to ultimately throw another uh, easy touchdown to Michael Thomas. And for this final play, you know, I was initially going to show some more of Armstead just utilizing that solid, solid technique in terms of, hey, he's going to lag inside out. He's going to let that defender declare himself to the C gap and then he's going to, he's going to turn and go with him, right? It's what has made him super successful uh, for the most part as, you know, over these past two seasons in 1,537 snaps, this dude's only allowed one sack. And that's, and that's wildly impressive. A lot of it's to do with his footwork, but I did want to have fun with this final play as, you know, you're going to see him using his footwork kind of in an unconventional way as, is what you're going to see is he's going to manipulate uh, JPP off the edge here by stabbing this right foot out in space real quick. And what you're going to see is JPP expecting, expecting to be kind of short set and uh, Tron Armstead to get his hands on quick. Watch how he kind of he kind of hesitates in which he kind of concedes his chest. And, and as a result, Armstead, they will just use that length, use that athleticism to kind of cover that, uh, cover that distance, I guess you could say, as he uh, is able to keep the pocket clean for Drew Brees. I just thought this was this was something else because you very rarely, I, I would say, want to be in this position as an offensive lineman, especially going against somebody like JPP. But, but hey, you know, when you're packing uh, such a punch with your hands, you're going to force guys to, you know, when, when they think you're going to throw, they're going to have to react, right? Because as a defensive lineman, you're taught when they're throwing your hands, you, you got to try and get your hands either up and under, you got to swat theirs away to try and uh, clear them, clear their hips and go, right? Well, Oh, hey, here you have JPP. You see a visual representation of JPP when he thinks that he's going to throw hands. He, he starts to put his out in the open. He kind of backs up in which he's anticipating that punch. And then, hey, Armstead, he's able to just get his hands right up top around uh, around the numbers of JPP. And there's a clean pocket for yet another touchdown this time to Traquan Smith. Just great stuff. Uh, by Armstead that he does on such a consistent basis, right? You don't only allow one sack in the last two years if you're if you're inconsistent and if you're sloppy with your footwork and mechanics, right? Well, Armstead, he's most definitely not. And it's why, again, I'm not saying he's a bad pass blocker by any means when I say he might be a better run blocker. I'm saying that he's fantastic at both of them. And ultimately, that's why he is number 64 on my list. And as always, if you guys did enjoy this video today, make sure you not only leave a thumbs up, but also leave a comment in the comment section down below, whether it's agreeing or disagreeing with my evaluation, agreeing or disagreeing with the ranking at number 64, or, or heck, if it's just pointing out, hey, Michael, you're a, you're a clown, because that last touchdown, that was, that was Ted Ginn, not Traquan Smith. Trust me, I know, I know now. I, I, recognize, uh, I recognize my mistake, but, uh, but you can comment any of those. I love to hear your guys' feedback and uh, love to have a conversation down below in the comment section. But with that being said, if you did just enjoy the video altogether, if you're a Saints fan, if you're just an NFL fan and, and enjoyed hearing my kind of breakdown analysis of what I think makes Armstead so special, there's a lot more where that came from. Not only are there are there a bunch of other videos that I, that I posted in the series thus far, I'll, I'll have the playlist on the screen here, but there's going to be 63 more of them to come. There's going to be quite a few more Saints. There's going to be quite a few more guys from from likely your favorite team in some way or another. If I don't have them on the docket, that means I already hit them uh, previously. So click the playlist, click the subscribe button, click whatever you want. I'm mic'd up, and now I'm mic'ing out. Peace, guys.